Hello and welcome to the JTA Films podcast. Um, I'm Ian Sargenson. And I'm Luke Taylor. And we're going to um, be coming on your screen every week or so just to chat about films, chat about the things that we're interested in, the things we've been watching, the things we want to watch. And we really want to get you involved too. Isn't that right, Luke? Yes, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to ask questions each week, which we'll dig into ourselves, but we'd love to hear your answers to those questions as well. Uh, we've put one out on Twitter already for our first record next week. Um, what was that question again, Ian? The question was, which film have you watched the most times in your life? <laughs> so I used a... to watch, when I was a kid, I used to watch films on a daily, or if not, certainly a weekly basis. The same <laughs> yes. five or six films. So there's so many films that I've seen a lot of times. That's the thing is, uh, whenever I pick one, we'll, we'll go through them, but most of them are going to be films made in the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> because modern films 90s. have got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> because especially when you have like six VHS tapes and that's your library. <laughs> and you just sort of watch. I can even remember on some films the exact point on the VHS where it glitches. <laughs> yeah. So you're watching it on DVD now. That's where the glitch was. That's where I lost audio. Yeah, good time. So, yeah, so there's some that I've watched. It must be hundreds and hundreds of times. So. Yeah. I might, I might have to do a sliding scale of, okay, these are the ones that you're never going to catch up with. But in the last few years, these are the ones that are the contenders. Yeah. Um, but, yes, there's some that come immediately in mind. I'm looking forward to getting into that. I imagine for our age, it'll be a lot of people. It'll be <laughs> a lot of 80s films. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you have an answer to that question, send it in to us. We'd love to uh, hear from you. We'll read a few answers out while we're on and uh, and we'll discuss them. And we may mock the ones that um, that we don't like. Well, I think it's um, it's certain that we'll mock the ones that we don't like. <laughs> yes, um, but we want you to come back. We want the interaction. So as well as asking questions, we'll have guests on to be asking them about their favourite films um, and their film the films that are important to them and we'll be having different conversations about different things that are upcoming and we're all excited about cinemas reopening oh yes i mean that's the reason we're doing this podcast really is because you know we've been friends for a lot of years but we we both have this thing where we just love films yeah we always love films and recently it feels like we've been deprived of films yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of them that I was excited about so many films that were going to come out, but they got pushed back and pushed back because of the pandemic. And I went once to the cinema during the pandemic um, and I was the only one in there, so I felt fine. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just miss it. And there's been so much, because of the delays, there's been a lot of rubbish. <laughs> oh, man. It's like everything that was going to be a failure seems to have what's been coming out. Uh, oh, man. Like Wonder Woman. That that was that was that was bad. That was bad. I I, I can't I can't even hear, think of any defence for for some of the stuff. I've I haven't seen it yet. Is that the nineteen eighty four? Is it? Yeah, yeah. I I, I like the first one, but this one. Well, I watched the just... first one. I thought the first two acts were exceptional, and the final act just let it down for me. It just got a bit. Yeah, numb. that's fair. That's fair. I think it was a built. The first one was like the first Superman film. Yeah. With, but with an overblown ending. For some reason, they've chose the model for this one to be the third Superman film. Oh. <laughs> or maybe the fourth. I mean, it looks like it could have all been shot in Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching from Milton Keynes, then there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not It's not Metropolis. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, that one. I mean, so what did you go see when you went to the cinema during the pandemic? I went to watch Tenet. Tenet, what did you think? Well, it's 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 a bit like it's like Inception and some of the others in the the catalog that I think it's fine to a point and then it just descends into farce and it overcomplicates it. So if if I need you know to Google what was happening afterwards, then <laughs> then it's too much. You know what I mean? I'm not the, the most intelligent man, granted, but I don't want to feel like an exam when I'm going to cinema. So the acting was good. It looked brilliant. There was so much to love about it. Mm. And then when it got to the whole thing that um, that was the selling point, it just descended up its own backside for me. I suppose it did. Yeah, I, I, I liked some of the backwards. The backwards stuff was fun to watch for a while. <laughs> but then when it got to the big action sequence at the end, I was just sort of thinking, I, I don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what a temporal pincer movement is. I don't know. No, understand. exactly. <laughs> and then you, you go online and there's people arguing whether it would work and whether it's scientific, scientifically plausible. And I just, I just don't need that. 
I mean, I like a bit of complexity. Like, I like um, films that have, you know, something different, but mm. it, just became, it just felt a bit self-indulgent to me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I enjoyed it, but I did come out. Plus, again, it's a Nolan thing, but half the time you can't hear what's been... It's like he's doing it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I mean, we could discuss that one week because I'm a big fan of his films, some of his mm. films. Really one of my favourite films ever was one of his. Yeah, big fan of his ideas. But I think with some of them, certainly lately, he just it's just a bit indulgent. Let's be as complicated as we can. And <laughs> The same with Inception. I thought it was 90% brilliant, 10% nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I went to the cinema three times, I think, during the... I think it was three times. I'm just trying to have a look back at what I've seen. But I think I went three times during the um, the pandemic. The first one <laughs> was to see um, Unhinged. It was literally the only film out at that point. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I haven't seen that yet, but I've not heard good things about it. It's on Sky today, actually. I think it's on oh, Sky's it? premiere today. Um, <laughs> oh, well, today, as in Friday, you're probably watching this after that. But <laughs> um, it's okay. It does what it says on the tin. It's Russell Crowe being angry at somebody and, and making their life a misery. I remember I enjoyed it more because it was just like most of the experience was it's nice being back at the cinema. I mean, yeah. it's so nice. And so I really enjoyed this. This is before masks were compulsory as well. Um, so we went again, we did Tenant and then we did um, we did Bill and Ted. Yeah, I mean, I'd, again, there's a lot of these films I haven't seen. Not because, because I mean, I love films, you know that, but I just didn't fancy them. No, Bill and Ted I was... I didn't want to pay my money or, or whatever. As much as I love going to cinema, I love going to cinema. I hate going to the cinema to watch stuff that I don't like. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, one thing we did do during... The, again, because it was... We just wanted to go to the cinema. They'd put your... Because there was no films, so they put Jurassic Park back on. Back on. But they yeah. put it on with the um, the 4DX, with the moving seats and the water and, the, and all of that kind of thing. And... We had a great, and there was nobody else in. There was just the two of us. Yeah. And we had a great time watching what is still a great film. Yeah. Um, and that's the difference. Seeing a good film in that environment. A one yeah, and that's what well. I get behind. And I wish, I mean, some cinemas do it with one screen or something, but I wish to do more. Hmm. You know, because I would, I would, I would, a lot of the films I watch, I'd say 50%, maybe 60% of the films I watch are rewatches. Hmm. Because, I just love it because some things I haven't watched for a long time and I find that I enjoy them much more now, but films that I watched at the cinema a long time ago or even didn't watch at the cinema, I would love to watch in that cinematic experience, mm, yeah. especially with the quality of cinema we have nowadays. Yeah, I mean, when they have done re- the trouble is with the reissues, a lot of the time they charge you more money for it as well, yeah, yeah. Um, which is a bit of a shame. We, uh, I remember a few years ago we went to see Jaws um, on the big screen. I'd never, because obviously I wasn't born when it came out, I'd never seen it on the big screen. And you come out and you think, man, they just don't make films like that anymore. No. It was so good. And Every so we'll get into was. this in a few weeks, but Jaws is up there for contender for me. Probably, it was definitely the scariest film I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. I watched it as a child, and because of Jaws, I've been traumatised ever since regarding the sea. <laughs> Even the North Sea, where we grew up, Luke. I won't go into the North Sea. There's not much chance of sharks being in the sea. Not much. But if there is sharks in that sea, you know they're going to be 30 feet long. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I've got some stories about sharks. So when we go on all day, Kate, my wife, she she goes in the sea and I, I stand on the beach looking out. Really? Yeah, I've never been more than knee deep in any sea in my life. Is that because of Jaws? Yeah. Traumatised wow. a kid. Wow. Well, I've been in a, a shark tank. Oh, no. Now, when I say that, that sounds great. But it, it was in um, it was in South Africa. It was in it was in like a, a a water park sort of situation, and the sharks were like you know they were that big. Well, maybe that big, but they weren't big sharks. And you you know, so you're trying you you're trying to get a photograph. Somebody take a photograph of you in the cage and trying to hide the size of the sharks so they're a little <laughs> bigger than they are. <laughs> I missed the opportunity to do a proper one with great whites. Oh, not a chance! Not a chance. <laughs> Them and snakes, like indie, I'm just, I just don't like snakes. <laughs> snakes, no, I'm not not awfully keen. Did you, did you ever have them being brought in at school where they had to, you had to touch them and prove that they weren't yeah. slimy? And, yeah, I don't know. It was one of them things where I knew that if you show weakness, then everyone's going to be on to you. So I just <laughs> pretended and touched it, but yeah, don't like snakes. Sam, 
I'm okay. I suppose I'm okay with snakes. Um, it's the little, it's the little, it, the little insects that bother me. Um, I have this thing about wasps. I think I got stung a lot as a kid. Actually, no, I don't think I got stung a lot. I got stung a few times. That's magnified in memory. And uh, I used to be absolutely terrified. I'd run across the street. I'd run across traffic if there was one near me when I was when I was really younger. Um, yeah, not good. The most damage I've ever done by bee being done by bees or anything is watching my girl. I think. <laughs> you know, I hadn't seen that until recently. Oh, I had brutal. never seen it. Never seen it. Brutal. And Amelia made me watch. Well, not made me. Amelia suggested we watch it, and uh, it's a pretty good film. Yeah, but it's heartbreaking. It is, it is. Well, I think we'll wrap up. We'll just we would. Just, this is just a little trailer for for what we're going to do. So we weren't going to spend too long on this. Um, but can I encourage uh, if you're watching, get in touch with us. Uh, what's our Twitter handle? Oh, you might have to edit this in. Let me have a look. It's <laughs> at JTA Film. JTA Film. And um, so let us know what film you have seen the most, and you can do it on a sliding scale. If you've watched the one a lot in the past couple of years, that can't possibly beat the ones you saw as kids. But still, given time, would take over. Let us know what they are as well. Yeah. And uh, we will be recording next week. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going out on the 1st of May for the first full-length podcast. Brilliant. So keep an eye. We'll try and make sure this is available on as many podcast services as we can. But we're kind of learning how to do it as we go. And uh, there'll be a video version on YouTube. Look forward to it. Brilliant. Well, uh, we look forward to seeing you next week and uh, let us know which film you've seen more than any other.